Let me show you guys real quick what the weather looks like in Washington right now. It is gorgeous. It's basically summer. It's more day weekend right now, but my goodness, that is beautiful. Hey, what's up everyone? Danny here. As you can tell by my voice, I am still showing symptoms of being sick. My voice is not fully recovered yet, and I have like phlegm and mucus uh, all in my throat area. So uh, the build video that was supposed to be complete when this is being uploaded is being pushed once again. I don't want to do it, but with these build videos, I put a lot of time and effort into like, you know, deal hunting for the parts, assembling the builds, and then benchmarking them. You know, I don't want a build video that can potentially be really popular uh, to have my sick nasally voice all over it. So that's why I am going to delay the build until I am fully recovered. Don't worry, I'm not delaying it because I slacked off or anything. The build is complete. Like, all the benchmarking is done. I got all the B-roll. I just need my voice back so I can do the A-roll and voiceovers, I promise. So in this video, I want to actually talk about buying OEM systems and putting in a graphics card that's powered through the motherboard into it. You see a lot of tech YouTubers recommending this now since we have these new, very efficient graphics cards that don't require like an external six to eight pin connected from your power supply. You can just use, you know, the crappy power supply from the OEM system and all you literally have to do is plug in the graphics card and it's like a really cheap budget build. What I don't see people talking about though is situations of this not working because I ran into one situation where this does not work and looking it up on Google I've seen that this is a pretty common problem and I haven't heard many tech YouTubers talk about it except for tech deals he ran into a very similar problem as I did. So in this video we're gonna kind of try to troubleshoot the problem I'll try to explain it and then just try to bring more awareness awareness to this issue and hopefully if people find out about this uh, you can all chime in as to what hardware works and does not work when it comes to OEM systems and plug and play power uh, graphics cards. So let's get right into it. Alright so here we are at the test bench and this is an Optiplex 990, so it's got an i5-2400 in it with an OEM Dell motherboard. And I bought this for the Budget Build Showdown, if you recall, uh, a while back. And what I did was I bought this and I bought a replacement power supply. Uh, it was a Corsair CX600 and I bought a GTX 660, which requires one 6-pin connector uh, to make the build. And it was a really cheap build, it worked great. And I even uh, did a run where I put a 290X into this. Uh, with the CX600 and that worked fine. So we know that these systems, if you put graphics cards in there that required external power uh, from the power supply, then it works fine. But then I thought, you know what? I have this old power supply that I could put to use if I put in a card that draws power directly from the motherboard. Um, a lot of people have been recommending that and I had a 460 on hand from a previous build I did. So that's exactly what I did. I put it in and um, I reinstalled the new drivers and I'll show you what happens here. Uh, it, it does work, so let me turn it on real quick and let's set this power up. But the car does work in there. Uh, it powers up and uh, you know, you can get into windows and all that stuff. So let me boot up real quick and I'll show you what happens. Okay, so we're in windows now and as you can see, everything works just fine. Like I can open up the browser and Search something up real quick. So this works fine. You wouldn't know that there's anything wrong with this just from using it uh, for you know day-to-day -day tasks and email and stuff. They're very light tasks. But now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna open up MSI Afterburner. Uh, it kind of gives you a good idea of you know how much the card is being loaded, plus or minus uh, like let's say 20% for efficiency. Now we're gonna open up Unigen Valley. And we're going to try to run this. I'm going to run it in windowed mode, not at full resolution, so that we can still see this on the side. And remember, everything looks like it's fine here. It looks like, you know, there's no issues. And let me show you real quick. Uh, here is the RX 460s being detected. You know, you can move the slider and stuff. I just have everything at stock right now. And we're going to try to run Valley. And the RX 460 is a 75 watt card. So PCIe slots are supposed to be able to put out 75 watts. Maybe even a little bit more, but we're gonna see that there are going to be issues. Well, you can see from already that it's stuttering and 
it looks like it froze. Oh, no, it's back. But as you can see, it's kind of stuttering and having issues. So let me pull up Afterburner right here. So the max spikes somewhere up to 41 watts. And, uh, but for the most part, it's staying around like, you know, seven, anywhere from seven to like 16 watts being pulled. And I came across an article that showed uh, where this guy took a picture of his motherboard. It was a Dell Optiplex system, not exactly the one that I'm using, not the 990. On his motherboard, it stated 35 watt from the PCIe slot. I looked at my motherboard, I took a really close look at it. This does not have that on it. But I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it's just a Dell proprietary thing to limit their PCIe slots because they don't intend for these to be run with you know video games and stuff. For the most part, uh, I guess they would expect at max you put in one of those really crappy like uh, GT210 cards or something that have like no power draw just to get like dual monitors. That could be one explanation for it and for me I think that would make sense. We're seeing that uh, so we pulled a little bit more than 35 watts but this could either be due to efficiency or that it's actually a little bit higher than the spec because not everything is perfect. The only thing is though I know people have successfully put GTX 1050s and 1050 Ti's which are the same rated power as the RX 460. They're 75 watts and those have worked with OEM power supplies uh, without this issue. So that 35 watt max explanation kind of goes out the window when you consider that. Now my own experience also contradicts that 35 watt limit because if you remember from the budget wheel showdown, the GTX 660 in there, that on the Nvidia website has a power draw of up to 140 watts. Now I overclocked that card and I ran it, you know, all the benchmarks, pushing it to 100%. So it was probably getting close to there. Let's just say it hit like 120 watts or 130 watts. Now the uh, power connector from when I had the CX600 in there, that six pin should provide up to 75 watts. That's what they're rated for. So 75 watts into the GTX 660, if it was pulling 130 watts, then that would mean that it still needed around 55 watts or so from the motherboard. And when I had my GTX 660 in here, there were no issues. I didn't run into anything like that. So I think this motherboard should be able to supply more power than, you know, 35 watts. I just don't know why for the RX 460 or apparently for the 560 as well, according to tech deals, he tried both of them. It doesn't work. I don't know what to say except for if you're buying one of these systems make sure that someone else has already successfully done it because there's not any official information out there like Dell's not going to put out information saying oh which one of these new graphics cards are compatible with it so what you have to do is basically go and see who has successfully done it on either forums or other youtube videos and make sure that it's been done before unless you want to test it yourself and risk it not working i just wanted to make a video on this because i couldn't find anything else regarding this uh, exact problem i found some forum posts and then the tweets that tech deals put out but uh, i just wanted to bring this to people's attention because i think a lot of people are looking into these OEM systems. These have become really popular as of late because of how quickly you can, you know, just switch the power supply or the graphics card uh, and then have a really good system because of the CPU that's already in there. These i5 uh, Sandy Bridge processors, they're super good and even up to like modern day mid range cards, uh, they won't really bottleneck. Let me know down below in the comment section if you have paired any other system, not just like Optiplexes, but maybe like a Lenovo or HP pre-built or something like that with a certain graphics card and if you run into problems or if it works fine for you. And I'll update the description so that um, it would have that information. So whoever comes across this video, you know, trying to put an OEM system together with a uh, low powered card uh, so that they'll know, so that they don't make a mistake kind of like this. Mine wasn't necessarily a mistake because I already had the hardware on hand. I just wanted to optimize the parts I had and make use of that crappy Dell power supply. And ends up it doesn't work. So I'm gonna have to put a power supply back in it and put in the GTX 660, but that's not the end of the world. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you found it informative. Uh, if you enjoyed it and did find it helpful, please be sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Um, I'm going to stop talking now because uh, this talking is just making my voice uh, get even worse. I really need to just rest and get better so I can get that build out. So uh, I hope to see you guys down in the comment section below as well as in the next video, which is hopefully the build. Uh, I really want to get that out. But yeah, thanks for watching.
บาย